Swagger, who needs an introduction? He's the leader of the world's greatest rock and roll band, but is an enigma to his fans. He is, of course, Mick Jagger. So, Mr. Mick, yes. th there seems to be a confusion about, you know, who you are, this image you have. It's either, like, the bad boy of rock and roll, or you're Mr. Smart Business Guy, you're London School of Economics. You're people not, like, uh, people They are, want to think yeah. he's one or the other. Yeah, people can't, like, take on that you can be really bad and loutish, but you also be quite intelligent at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but why? I think that journalists only have time for one, uh, one-dimensional people. Yeah, they want to make everyone one-dimensional. So you, you get stuck with an image very early on in your life. Mick Jagger's image? Bad boy of rock. Vivid images that cultivated the Stones' mystique. We're splitting, man, if those cats don't stop beating everybody up inside. Violence at Altamont, where a fan was killed by biker bodyguards. Partner Keith Richards' drug arrest and a parade of beautiful women, including Margaret Trudeau, which exploded into a scandal in Canada. I can't get no satisfaction. But above all, there was the music. Raunchy, raw, pushing the boundaries. And it came so easily, like the night Keith Richards wrote their most famous song. I write satisfaction uh, in a dream, basically, in bed, I wake up, I don't even remember, I put it... Is that the true? Yeah, I put it down on a little early cassette player, uh, fall asleep. In the morning, I remember nothing of this except that I see that the tape has gone from one, from the beginning to the end. I run it back, and there is basically, for 30 seconds, 50 seconds, satisfaction. Da, 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 I can't get no I'm riding him got bam. And then there's me snoring <laughs> for 40 minutes. <laughs> and uh, the next week you've recorded it. But you don't even hardly know it. Yeah, and I spent 30 odd years playing that song and I'm still learning it. Every time you go out there you you have to sort of be as good as before, if not better. So every time you go out there, you have to um, prove yourself in a way. Today, the Stones are larger than life. As the last remaining supergroup from the 60s, their cross-generational appeal makes them the most successful touring act around. Stage shows, which would make Cecil B. DeMille gasp, are the highest grossing in a big money industry. Tell me about this last tour. I mean, there must have been times when you looked out in the audience and saw like three generations. Yeah. You and you'd think. People holding up their tiny <laughs> babies going. Well, this. you've got a tiny baby. You I know, but I wouldn't yours. take it to a Rolling Stone <laughs> show. <laughs> And what is your connection with the other guys? The rest of the time, it seems your lives are pretty separate. Your worlds are pretty mm. separate. Your businesses are pretty really? separate. Really? No? Not, I mean, it's not true. You know, we just spent two years together. I mean, it's like almost every, seeing people almost every day for two years. And here I am back in Toronto and Keith's next door and I'll see him in a minute. So we've been two years on the road together. I mean, Can you still stand each other? C close, you know. Well, we need a break properly. He can have a break any time he likes. You know, how long would he like it? Lifelong friends, Keith and Mick, are like an old married couple who still know how to turn on the passion when the moment's right. Not that there haven't been ups and downs. I guess there are times when it's sort of come close to drifting apart and that you've oh, been yeah, really yes. angry. I, I, I called uh, the period between night after Dirty Work, 1985 to 89, that was actually World War III, but it's not been recognized as such. <laughs> but believe me, between Mick and me, it was kind of like that. He's got a lot of hidden talents, you know, and, uh, you know the ones, the obvious ones we all know about. He's mm -hmm. great, you know, the showman, singer, and uh, bullshit artist. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you still feel like a sex symbol when you're up there? I mean, Keith talks about, you know, people make nasty comments about how old he is, but he said the chicks are still throwing panties. Yeah, they, you know, Keith's got a big collection of panties. <laughs> really? How does he decide what to keep? He wears them all. <laughs> oh, he's just trying to bullshit her. He knows what he is. <laughs> You know, it, just, it doesn't really bear thinking about being a sex symbol, but it's, it's um, I guess so it's got its, you know. Well, it's been part of your stick. It's been part of your bread yeah. and butter. I guess, you know, I enjoy it. I think if you go on stage and you're in front of 50,000 people and they're all kind of enthusiastic, you don't really need any more. Yeah, I do, have, I do have a certain appeal, apparently. I can't even imagine why now, at my age, looking like this. What a drag it is getting old. So why do the Stones keep rolling? After all, Mick and the boys are well over 50 and still perform when most men their age are pondering their pensions. But they insist the show must go on. It's their calling. I know you get sick of asking because you can, because it feels good, because it makes sense, because of all those well, things. If, do you you, get tired? if I was Count Basie or, or, or Duke Ellington or Ray Charles, no. would you say, why do you keep on going? You just, no, you it's because it's rock and roll, I guess. And no, it seems it's just like... because we're in the same vein. We come, we're minstrels. We come out of, out of, all out of the same thing. Why shouldn't we? Yeah. If I were black, nobody would do this. It's kind of an inverted racism in a way. You know, I mean, is that everybody would be going, yeah, go for it, man. See how far you can go. Is there a plan? When you ever play, this will be the last time you don't think, well, it might be. Or well, you don't think, oh, of course this won't be. Sometimes I do, yeah, and then I think... <laughs> this is oh, going to be... This I always think it's going to be, we're never going to do it again, and then we always do, so I kind of like got bored in thinking about it. So I'm sure we're, the Rolling Stones will carry on doing shows until we stop. Time.